Well, I mean, without mental again, this should be a snappy show. Snappy. We're going to go quick. It's right. He'll show up probably. Maybe. Are, are we ready? Yes, yeah. we are. Are we ready? Let's do it. No, nobody's going to throw bread. No. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemon champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA. We don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or, or a lucky one. Chrissy. 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 And I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little. And learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. Oh, I'm Jeff. Oh my God. Sorry, it's like mental's not me here. Mental's not yeah. here. Not I, at least not yet. Sure. Yeah. We hope Great. mental breaks free of his work life. It's good. Check no, it. he has a job. Something has to pay for all of his shenanigans. <laughs> it's true. So uh, yeah, that's fine. Hey, and we are everyone racers. Welcome to a Fletna episode of our podcast. It's episode wow. 282. The Flettner 282 Colibri or Hummingbird is a single seat intermeshing rotor helicopter or synchropter. It's considered by some to be the world's first series production helicopter. Only 24 were produced. Most were destroyed by the Soviets, but three survived. So if you're not driving a dual splitting blade 1940s design flying machine, well, you're probably not because you're going to die if you do. Um, hey, then you can use our you our bingo card. I, I was 100 ex- percent less likely to cause death. I, I was expecting this. I clicked the link. I was expecting it to look like the gyrocopter from Mad Max, but there was really a lot more helicopter than I expected on this thing. It, it was still precariously. I mean, like you're still going to die. You're still yeah. going to die. It was like half of a hel- like if you cut a helicopter in half at the middle. And then, like, sat on the front end. That's what it looked like. Yeah. I mean, it's got a big uh, rudder, too. Yeah. It doesn't need a tail rudder. Interesting. So I'm disappointed that this is not the Bertone episode. Just well, that's 262. So. Oh, there's a 282C. No? 1978? Oh, well, there's a 282. Well, it's people who well, have made 282s by putting V8s in 262. So. Got it. Got it. They made it a 282. Never mind. Yes. We missed it on 262. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Who's Wait. working on something? Uh, uh, Cr- uh, Cr- Chris is. Yeah. <laughs> He's I, the fine. only one. <laughs> I'll go. What have I been working on? Well, this weekend I flew one time around the pattern. One time. Because the airspeed indicator was not working. Like a taxied up, powered on the runway, going along the runway. I'm like, this should, I'm going definitely fast enough. And the plane's like trying to take off. I'm having to hold it down and no airspeed indicator. So whatever we take off and, uh, turn, uh, turn up wind and or turn to the Northeast and sure enough, still no ASI. So we had to turn around and land. Cause that's kind of a critical instrument on a plane. Um, so you drive two hours, get in, do your pre-flight, say yeah. it doesn't work. Taxi up, say Put it, it doesn't back. work, land, taxi back look at it say well no. not much i can do now come home uh, we think we think it was water frozen in the pitot tube between there and the asi could, could you not like get out a hair dryer or i suggested it's, that it has to go from the wing like a couple feet out of the wing all the way up into the wing along inside the wing down into the plane over to the thing and like you can't get to most of it that's the problem it's, it's inaccessible inside mm, the wing got it if I could get to the whole thing, then sure, I'll go to Home Depot and buy a torch and I'll make it happen. But apparently later in the day, Sasha checked it and it was working fine. So I, it was ice, stupid ice. Stupid so anyway, we're going to try again. What the heck? Um, I also then uh, later that day proceeded to break my TIG welder, no. which is great. <laughs> yep. Which is new out of the box. The box Five is years not in the box. <laughs> yes. Not the box is not new. It is new out of the box as of recent. So yeah. So it's, it's out of warranty. But yeah, it only has of course it is. a handful of hours on it. Mm, uh, yeah, I, t- I turned on. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do aluminum. I get, I watched a video on aluminum. I get all my aluminum preps. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do some practice pieces. Aren't we ready to go? Yay! And I got four inches in, and it went 
and then a light came on that and it, this i'm kind of upset with eastwood their manual oh, so mad it doesn't tell you what the warning oh, lights are bad. there's three warning lights nowhere in it does it tell you what the warning lights are even though right above the warning lights is a little like infographic it's a triangle with an exclamation mark like and then hazard a book. Book. It's like, so if some of these happens, look at the book. It's like, I'm looking at the book. It never says what the warning lights are. And of course, but, I come home and I say, are you sure? <laughs> yes. Like, yes, here. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, but I have been speaking with the folks at Eastwood and they have been very nice about this so far, trying to help me figure out the diagnosis on my own. But once they've learned that I lived 15 minutes from their HQ, they said, oh, well, just call over there. And I did. And I spoke to a nice gentleman there who had already spoken to the tech guy I talked to. And he's like, oh, yeah, yep, you got it. Just bring it in. We'll take a look at it. If it's repairable, which it probably is, he said, it'd be $106 no matter what I have to do to it. So bring That's it in, great. drop it off. We'll have it done probably a week. Yeah, so, but the problem so, is this is annoying because we're losing yeah. two weeks worth of, of time of when yeah. we're going to do a project and it delays everything else. Yep. So I, uh, I was flashing back to an 80s comedian, Richard Lewis who talked about the worst car he ever owned. He said, I won't say what it's called, but it rhymes with Magwar. <laughs> and, and he said, a light came on the dashboard and he couldn't figure out what it was. And he called the dealership and he says, there's this light on. I can't figure out what it says. They said, what's it look like? He says, it looks like two Dutchmen hanging themselves. And the guy said, you need oil. And then hung up the phone. Well, the internet also did not give you any Nothing. indication. Yeah. We said it's a white, white light, light, first of three warning lights. Nothing. So nobody's ever had this issue. Apparently. Amazing. I and, like breaking things in ways that no one else has. And and it just didn't do anything. Like yeah. No, nothing. None of the controls no, worked. Nothing it, just, it just said, yeah. nah, I'm out. It gave just up. Blank, yeah. blank, blinked a light. So we shall see. Chrissy's going to drop that off tomorrow. We shall see if by showtime next week I have a working welder again. So I can start going back to the aluminum that I was all ready to weld. Yep. Uh, and also, I have been fixing a fuel leak and replacing a valve cover gasket on Chrissy's mom's car. Came in reeking of gas. Turns out, I guess I'm, I'm annoyed at a service. I had the injectors done by a place in Idaho that I've used several times called Mr. Injector. Usually very good. No problem. Sent me them back this set. And the gaskets, the new O-rings they put on them, were a little big. And I could not get them to seat in the head very well or in the oh, rail. Yeah, the rail. So yeah. I used a combination of those and a combination of the old ones. Well, the big two big ones mostly just had a you know got kinked on the way in. And then some of the and the old ones in the head split. And so two of them were leaking. So I have all new. Bosch injector seals on the way that will fit properly. And yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. It's annoying having to do a job again. Because yes. this is the Mazda 5, job. right? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. mom's car. Am, yeah. Yep. I'm just saying, because anyway. you know, all the new listeners that tuned in this weekend and don't remember <laughs> what my parents drive. Chrissy's mom has a 180,000 mile 2009 Mazda 5. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. It's yep. a great vehicle. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right, Chrissy, okay. what were you doing? Oh, not much. I was making some soup. I also, so I guess I, this is jumping ahead because uh, I also have an injury. I am, uh, I had something kind of on my back, not as near, it sounds nearly as bad as yours. I can move, but I was not as mobile this weekend. And you'll notice if you're watching YouTube that I have a large thing on my head. It is an eagle head, which is a little hard to see. Um, <laughs> when, you, when you tilt there, all of a sudden I can see its eye and it's looking at right? me. Ah! Right? It's, yeah. Uh, it's going to come off soon because I have headphones on too and it doesn't really fit. Uh, and we're waiting on Eagles victory. So we uh, will have a party. And if you're listening to this next Monday, I'm either you'll know that I'm happy or sad. So there's that. Going to have a big party. You guys on a party? We are. I made sure to invite everyone from my parents' house, my brother, his kids, everybody but their mutt is allowed to come over for the Good. party. We're going to do it on two levels, feed ourselves disgusting food, and then hate ourselves. Sounds awesome. Yeah, that's right. Cool. So that's it. Uh, I do not have an Eagle shirt on. I have come a on. new Blip Shift shirt for the 24 hours of Daytona. 
you know and, it, and basically if it has golf colors on it i'm like order 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 so you got me again blip shift you should totally sponsor us uh but what was i doing this week uh so i tweaked my back something terrible uh it's a recurring problem i don't know if i remember mentioned it last week or not but uh it, i went from ow my back hurts to i can't move this sucks and i sat on a heating pad for like a week um i discovered a new thing a a icy cool icy hot pad thing like it's like a big sticker that Man, you, stick you are on getting your body. Old. wow yeah. yeah you're like this is so cool i was like this thing is amazing my wife would not get near me she was like that thing stinks <laughs> so i wish mental were here because he would know what movie it's from but it reminds me of Heartbreak Ridge when Clint Eastwood says, smells like a Ben Gay factory in here. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, ice is the answer. Just saying. Oh, no, heat. No, when I no. do ice, it makes me not move. Well, ice is how you actually solve the problem. You're going to heal yeah. it. Ice actually helps your muscles. And we say we know because of neuromuscular therapy in the family. Just saying. And all kinds of stuff. Yeah, very clear. Ice helps. Heat feels nice. You can alternate, but you got to have ice. My doctor yep. says heat and yep. gives me a drugs that I don't take. So that would probably help. Mm -hmm. So I don't take the muscle relaxer. Okay. No, All right. So I guess no, uh, no RX-7 work on this nice 50 degree I know. Saturday. I'm so upset. You're like, hey, we can come over. I'm like, oh, shit. I can't right move. and like chris is like i need friends let's go do something i'm gonna go do something because i was like you my were not welder is broken you were not I supposed to be here i was supposed to be doing things on my own and now you're here and he's like hi 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 what are we doing hi hi go find a friend thanks very annoying sorry i know right the lost vegas i know sorry I was taking a pause. Okay. The Las Vegas F1 race hasn't even happened yet. And the city is looking to extend the contract from three to 10 years. This is crazy. With an ex expected economic impact of around $1 billion, it is easy to see why. The Las Vegas Grand Prix stated that Formula One and Liberty Media have invested in Las Vegas with the purchase of 39 acres of land, building a 250,000 square foot paddock building and a full philanthrop philanthropic efforts to support local community. Making Las Vegas a permanent Grand Prix stop on the F1 calendar is our goal, and a 10-year approval pr provides us with a with certainty that the race weekend would be available on the calendar for long term. Already, the under-construction four-story paddock building is visible, and Liberty Media is expected to spend 500 million dollars on it las vegas also needs an, an, another 30 million worth of infrastructure work before the first race takes place november 16th to 18th this all makes me throw up can i say something about formula one please. please go back to last week and listen to my preview of the red bull real launch and you will see that everything i said came true it sucked the car did not change <laughs> It was terribly produced and nobody cared. And Ford is now the engine supplier in 2026. Whatever. Ford has stickers on the valve covers, at least. Yes, exactly. Totally. Uh, Christy, have you ever gotten your phone wet? <laughs> Why do you ask about this? My phone is supposed to be able to get wet. I know it's not what you're asking me, uh, <laughs> but Chris dunked it in the pool while we're in Cancun and it didn't it's work waterproof. for a whole day. And it I was work. so mad it worked so fine it mad. just said i'm it, not going to charge right now because there was some water but it works perfectly fine isn't it better that i asked that than brought up the time that our phones all gave each other a social disease that was a good time in too. uh but anyway yeah, right. yeah all of our one, phones though. broke because all of our charges no got 204 I, I we i Jim was the first I, one <laughs> Jim and so i have clearly, phone working phones my yep. phone infected all the other ones it's your typhoid mary phone exactly well, anyway <laughs> uh, before your phone was water resistant uh the common response to anyone who left their iphone in the rain was grab it yank it out and stick it in rice right everybody said put it in a bag of rice it'll be fine in a day well could you do this with a car what if you had an electric car 
Well, Rich Rebuilds wanted to know, and Rod Stump at the drive has the story. Noted Lemons racer Rich Benoit. It's Rich Rebuilds. Everybody knows him as Rich Rebuilds. Purchased an originally $110,000 electric Audi e-tron. Chrissy, you'll be you'll be good to know that this is basically a rebadged Taycan. Taycan! And I know you love the Taycan. I um, love the Taycan. So anyway, he bought it from Copart with 2,600 miles on it, but all the marks of a flood damaged car. This happened about a month ago that he bought it. And the original idea was to use silica gel, but it was too expensive. Uh, they talked to a bunch of engineers who basically said, uh, you put it in a bubble, you know, like the COVID bubble that uh, young Chris put around his, his sob, and then you put in a dehumidifier. And if you can run heat, you run heat. He said, well, nobody's going to watch that YouTube video. <laughs> so he bought 4,200 pounds of expired uncooked rice, built a box around the car, sealed it all up, and voila, after a few days, no, the car turned on. No. So they did a lot of stuff before they tried the rice trick. They, you know, blow, dry, blow dryers and, you know, took apart things and changed all the fuses and it just wouldn't turn on, wouldn't turn on, wouldn't turn on. A few days after the rice, totally turned on. Every single fault is on, nothing works, doesn't drive great, but it now turns on and can move under its own power. Dip your car in a bag of rice, everybody. Sure. Link in the show notes to the Drive article and the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not watching Rich Rebuilds, it, 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 even if you don't like the cars, it's pretty funny. All right. Check it out. All right. Well, around here, we like old Hondas. But if you have one with a recall Takata airbag, stop driving it. From Haggerty, already tens of millions of vehicles with Takata airbags are under recall from NHTSA. But now, uh, long-term exposure to high heat and humidity, these airbags can explode if deployed. That's so exciting. NHTSA has issued a do not drive directive to wow. orders of specific Honda and Acura models that haven't been returned for the recall yet. From a statement, if you have a vehicle to recall Takata airbag, you must get it repaired now for free. The inflators are two decades old. They pose a 50% chance of rupturing and even a minor crash. Wow. Don't gamble with your life or, so, or you're someone else's. Schedule your free repair before it's too late. So the cars in question, 01 and 02 Civic and Accord, 02 CRV and Odyssey, 03 Pilot and CL, and 02 and 03 TL. So Honda and Acura customer service can be read. Give them a call. There's the Dakota website. That's all there. So early aughts Hondas. What un does your sister have at early aught Honda? No, hers is a little newer than that. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I know. So I'm glad the NSX is not on the list here. It's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, it, a 2001, that's a 22-year-old Accord. Yeah. If this was a 22-year-old any other car, There'd be you none that, left. There's no, right. There's no like, grand dams on this list. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like oh, if it's an oh, if twenty three year old Camry or a twenty three year old Accord, pretty good chance they're still running. There ain't no yep. Chrysler the cars I mean, cars on here. You know? Ma like late Mazdas or late yeah. two thousand. This is protege era for this is Jeff. Sure, yeah. protege. Oh, I miss that car. I know you do. Oh, All right. Well. Um, here's some early. Can I can I do some early listener feedback? I don't Please really do. Have to do listener feedback in a minute. But uh, Joe K, I will hide his last name in case his significant other is listening. She's sent not. us sent us a picture of his new to him. Can someone share it? New to him N A Miata, Please which was low and sexy on a flat on a uh, in in flat black with a red hard top on the back of his uh tiny little flatbed trailer fueling up his tow pig at the local buckies local comes the picture Buc yeah Buc yeah because you got to have a bucky so i have no idea from where it texas stan it was in south carolina remember oh, it was in south carolina? okay yeah um so oh, and his man. uh his this comment is the one was, we had was this two weeks ago we had this i think so or uh, last week yeah yeah if so this his, is the, that's the that's the fun that's the joke this is the car we said two weeks ago from racing jug hey this is a cool car that's right 
So he said, thanks to you and racing junk for enabling my poor life choices. Poor life choices. So we had posted this two weeks ago. We, we discussed it briefly. And I asked him, that's awesome. What are you going to do with it? I didn't ask him anything about the, the details of the car. He says he's going to do track days and it will be an Exocet donor very soon. Poor life choices indeed, Joe. Poorly done, Joe. Poorly done. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. We I think it's something. fantastic too. Yeah, we talked about it as a great buy. So oh, yeah. I'm glad you did. You're glad you did it. Yeah. Uh, but hey, you know what? Isn't a poor life choice? If you're cruising around chasing uh, racing junk for your next d decision, we now have a discount code. How exciting is that? What? Cheaper yep. things. Racingjunk.com Pro Club membership for only $25 a year if you use what? the code pod 23 when signing up that's half price people this you can't crazy. afford not to buy it yeah i it know if you if you like sell one thing yeah if it's you sell one thing you're great. gonna make it up it's that's... a good deal at 50 bucks it's an awesome deal at 25 the, the the code again pod pod like podcast 23 for, no spaces no spaces yep pod two three so no contracts you can cancel any time you'll make us look good please go sign up you get five ads with 50 vote photos you can see how many people are looking at your items you get a dashboard you get to save favorite ads you get access to internal messages <gasps> early access to other people's listings hello bigger There's thumbnails a, while browsing a store discount yeah you can buy t-shirts there I discount might just sign up videos to upload well, the, definitely the corvettes going here in the spring you can uh, place yes. ads awesome you can and, and by the way you also don't have to look at the ads of like stupid podcasts like everyone racers that might drop free up. video upload a ten dollar value this is awesome yeah you can't afford not to you can't afford not to yep. Go to racing join junk. racing junk scroll joy joy scroll save some money plus you could sell that piece of crap that your significant other wants out of the driveway. And then you can buy a shirt with the money that you saved. Sure. <laughs> okay. I'm prices! There are none. Maybe next week. There probably are nope. some next week. Yeah. Nope. This is the weird time where some people have started and some people ended. Uh, do we have race results? We have race results! Uh, 2023 Shine Country Classic at Barber Motorsports Park started the Lemons season. Uh, eBay, uh, Halloween meets gasoline. Hi, hungry. I'm Dad in a Mazda 929. I have no idea what your theme is. I'm so excited. Yet a Mazda 929. Overall dad winners. Jokes. It's a dad joke. Dad joke. Love dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> overall <on>. winners. <laughs> Our no. boys, the oh, Spartan yes. Coronas. Yay! That's Darren's SLK230. Yeah. Well done. It's big yeah. sexy. Good mm -hmm. job. Uh, they actually kind of trounced them. I don't know if you were watching, but it was <laughs> Darren's like, oh, I won again. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> Damn, those guys are. Uh, and Drew and two others that I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, Mike was one of them, wasn't he? I don't know. I did, I don't didn't know recognize that. I saw the picture and I didn't, didn't recognize the other two. Okay. Uh, anything else on this list anybody wants to call out? Yeah. IOE, smoke and hot flashes in a Mercedes 280 SL. Those are always an IOE uh, contender. Org Choice Turtle Team in a Toyota Tercel. Chrissy? Oh, I got screwed. I uh, went to Onset Tetanus, which is sad. Uh, that was the PV544. They did a lot of work on it. I think yes, they did a... they did. They did and a... Mo motor swap i don't know they I were doing like, stuff late at one point late I, through the night yeah. they were going to make the green they they struggled they had a hard they had a hard weekend it's a shame because that's going to thunder hill in two weeks yes so. i know and they know and that's why they think they kept pushing because they yeah. were they were trying to get it done Eek. uh i don't i don't really some of these i don't care uh just choice went to retro racing in their volkswagen beagle beetle that is yo what? volkswagen super Beetle. Super, Ex yes. exclamation point super exclamation point <laughs> that is johan uh i'm pretty sure they were so they were and retro steve and the other guys, so, but yeah. no hold on hold on i'm trying to tell you the story i'm pretty sure steve was in the big bird costume and because they were retro racing 
Johan was dressed in retro clothes and Steve was in Big Bird. I'm pretty sure. Sounds about Steve, right. Steve, our Steve? No, no, no. No, no. no. Oh. no that the team, Johan oh, and Steve. Johan, Steve. Johan, Steve. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah, our, yep. our Steve was judging, correct? Steve, the dishwashing fairy. I don't. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I Either way. So. Uh, Either way, Heroic... big sexy. Congratulations yeah. on another win. Couple more. Heroic fix, a little Enos racing in a Ford Tempo. I mean, anytime someone's racing a Ford Tempo, you have to <sighs> just job. golf golf clap to you, fine people. <laughs> um, uh, so easy Floridians can do it. <laughs> Went to bar racing in a, <laughs> a Corolla. Class C winners, two wrongs make one right in a Fiero. Class B winners are the Flying Blurritos in a Camaro which they spelled wrong with an A. Two A's. Camaro. Yeah, it's got to be Camaro with an Com E. Yeah, you've got to put two O's in there. Yeah, that's with a Manuel transmission and everything. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, the final race of the Champ Car season happened last week. I have no idea who won because they were posting all of the season-ending winners. And uh, the Mazda Champ Car Challenge was won by some friends of yours, Chris. Uh, Tyler Stank, please take note. And everybody, congrats to Hong North Racing in their MX3. Um, there is a Mazda um, contingency. So they, being the highest finishing Mazda in the series, took home 1500 extra bucks. What is that? A Mazda contingency? Yeah. Mazda huh? gives money to amateur racers if they win. Huh. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, we got. We, we have, have to. to show you have to sign up for it and stuff. But yeah, 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 yeah. So we have to. We have to show it so Tyler can see their car and get a little wet in the pants. I think. Maybe and he knows about this car. This oh, is, does he? I mean, okay. yeah, this car. They have been working on this for years and years and years and years, and that, they all drive the wheels off of it, and they do a great job. That is a dead sexy looking little Mazda egg. Yeah. Great, great photo. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. Congrats, Hong North and all the other winners. Let's hear it, So in response to our last show about personal safety limits on Facebook, uh, Tyler said, I like this discussion. Like Chris said, I have my personal minima written down regarding when I'll get in an airplane, but never did that for racing. And a couple of times I've seen yellow flags on cars and not even said anything because I already paid my money to race it. And every time I regret doing it because my whole career as a pilot is based on not letting things like are having already spent money influenced my decisions regarding safety. And I think this is also titled that added I'm with just on safety glasses. I would probably use them with hand tools more often, but I will never work again with power tools without tight fitting safety glasses or goggles. I've already shared the story of when I got metal in my eye from a bench grinder while wearing poorly fitting safety glasses. And I don't ever want to experience that again. I don't like it. I, I should say my safety glasses are usually not tight fitting. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> whatever I can get. Yeah. They're the Johnny's Johnny they're Apple's be seed, whatever, wherever they are sitting. They're always within oh, these are some really scratched ones. But <laughs> I, I just wear like the the don't need to see. two dollar ones specials, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever can I can find. buy. Yeah. Uh they're and terrible. lastly they're going in the trash. <laughs> Or yeah, they're right. going in that pile of crap on the side of your desk. Which is, that's, that's the, that's the pre-trash. You know, throw them right out. I'm going to throw of, them out when I get there. He's got a lot of pre-trash piles around. They're not trash yet, but they're going to be. <laughs> All right. And a shout out to Carlton S. who posted a video of promptly removing his the, the guard that it comes with a on his brand new angle grinder and then promptly asking for OSHA to come and find him. I, he was kidding. Uh, thanks for the vid. That was fun. I didn't see that. Where was that? Was that on? The it was on YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube, YouTube comment. Yeah, on YouTube, yeah. YouTube comment. comment. That okay. was awesome. I'll have to go check that out. Thank you, Carlton. You know who uh, you never know... tempts OSHA? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's good. Chrissy's mom. No. Nope. You have something? No. That's all. Never tempts OSHA. Jeff, do you want to add one? I, I was going to say, you know who always comments on our YouTube videos? She That's, does not. I know. Yeah. She, listens, <laughs> she listens to the audio pod. Yeah, it's, yeah they're probably listening to it now, actually. Not this one, but previously. Hi, Chrissy's mom. Hi, mom. I hope your uh, Mazda doesn't smell like gas anymore. Oh, goodness. They woke up with headaches, then it was uh, it was, it was a lot. A small it was in amount their of gas makes a very big smell when it's yes. in a confined yes. space. Yeah. My, uh, my uh, scout friend with the C4 Corvette 
the green green one uh is dealing with a terrible gas smell and i just keep telling him it, like he says he tells me when it does it and i said well that's high pressure so it's somewhere between the fuel rail because it only happens like when it runs mm-hmm. it doesn't happen before it runs and not when it's parked and not when it's parked mm. when it's parked you walk up to it you smell nothing mm. you start it up and you instantly start smelling gas yeah this I'm one like, was smells all the time it's between the pressure yeah. regulator the fuel rail and the tank because it's either yep. in the return line or run anyway I should tell him to check the O-rings on his injectors. Yeah, especially if they're they're from the 90s or 80s, that it's quite possible they have just dried out and cracked and broken. Anyway. Cool. Should we get to our main topic? Yeah. I came up with this one, and I came up with this one because it's something that I don't always do. We were having a discussion in the office, and I said, well, that's future Jeff's problem because (laughs) I love, like Homer Simpson, setting up my future self for problems of your own making. Uh, But we really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, we really look look around. (laughs) Uh, But we really shouldn't be doing that when we're doing racing stuff. Uh, When we're designing our future, we need to anticipate, think ahead, assume that this hobby and this car and this team and these jokers that are surrounding you are going to be with you for a long time. Um, We should be doing what might be inconvenient or a little bit more expensive now to avoid pain for the future you. So I floated this out to the uh, to the lovely people that you see on the podcast and they said, love this topic. Let's talk about it. Clearly they're the experts and I'm not. So <laughs> I have. I feel like this tip. is a show for to tell you. And no, yes, not at all. I we Chris and I will often thank ourselves our our past selves for thinking of our future selves does that make sense right so i'll say like oh yeah past christy was really thinking for future christy this is great like i saved the bigger piece of pizza for the second day and i'm like yeah i i really thank you that's great you thought about me in the future totally 180 degrees from my life (laughs) i know and that's why it's funny that you brought this up because like i feel like we're we're pretty good at this but i like the topic this is awesome. Uh, and, and I should say that I really do do this in the race car. On my general regular life, usually pretty far from my thought. Yup. Yup. <laughs> yup. All right. Who wants to start? Uh, Chris was like frantically typing when when we were doing this. Oh, He's got a I lot of ideas. I do this kind of thing a lot. Yep. All right. So let's, let's start with like picking out a car, even that far in. If you're picking out a race car. I am saying go in with your eyes open to that choice. If you're going to go obscure, if you're going to go ridiculous, you're going to go terrible, do it knowing that that is the choice you're making, not finding out later. Not like, oh, a Mercure Scorpio, that's going to be cool. It's going to be great. a great race and car. reliable. Like, that's going to be really awesome. Like, do it because... I haven't seen one of those in 30 years. That's going to be fantastic. And we're not going to drive anywhere, but man, we're going to have plenty of time to say we got a Mercure Scorpio. I'm not even sure what a Mercure Scorpio. I mean, I know what it is. Who made that? Was that German or was that? It was a a German Ford. It was German. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think mine is along the lines of that. And that's, or maybe you were thinking more theoretical. I was, uh, thinking about all of the people on the internet that say, yeah, I should do a Mercur Scorpio or like, Hey, here's a Rolls Royce. We should do a Rolls Royce. And I'm, and, and I, we, and half the people say, yeah, it's already yeah, been done. 3 PM's already done that. Or, and other people for Rolls Royce. Um, and people have done it the one way and then another way. And just getting more information, I think, to make a better plan of what 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 is your plan? I mean, this goes back to so many times of what we talk about in uh, in many of other other shows. What's your goal? Like, figure out what if you want to have a really good time, or you don't want to have a good time, and you want to just su- struggle and go for that IOE, then know what your plan is. So, kind of along the same lines of as what Chris was thinking. I, I've got a couple thoughts on car selection and. 
One is, again, if we're talking about long term, if you're new to this, if you're looking at a new car, if you're trying to decide between car A and car B, small and light is going to make your life so much better in the future. The consumables, the tires, the brakes, the part, you know, and parts start different because, you know, but like you could get a smaller trailer and you can have a smaller truck and, you know, like you can, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do if your car is not so gosh darn big. And we already talked about it a minute ago. We're talking about racing junk, but there's a reason Miata is always the answer because it is so damn cheap to buy those little tiny tires and those little tiny brakes and the fuel is cheaper and you need less cans and all those like the cascading effects of an extra thousand pound race car even if it has the extra horsepower to move it it's cascading to everything that you do in your race team and i'll just say this common platforms right if you have cheaper motors you're gonna blow a motor you're gonna blow a motor you're gonna blow a motor where can you find one when you're in bumble cluck west virginia or kansas or two hours outside of chicago otherwise you're going to be swapping in one of those more common engines (laughs) yeah (laughs) When when your rotary blows up Oh, hundred well, percent. You know, like we went into it knowing that we were going to blow up our road year and knowing we were going to do an LS swap. But if you got that Mark Core Scorpio, you ain't finding one in the pick and pull. Nope. But then you can sit around and tell everyone about your Mark Core Scorpio. <laughs> the, the 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 back deck lid of those things were like great for picnics. Visioning. That's that's like, the XR4 Ti. I think you're. Thinking oh no no, that had the big wing. That would get in the yeah. way. You couldn't oh, put okay. your food on that. And I'm saying like, it had this like anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about building the car once you've got it. Who's got a thought? Uh, you know I have these. <sighs> think about future service and likely failure. You're gonna be working on this thing. It's gonna break. Are you putting it together in a way that you can take it apart again without deconstructing it? like terribly, or is it going to take you a long time? Is it possible to build it in a way that you can work on it again? Um, an example, like we put the splitter and front end of the Civic, went to a lot of effort to try to make it removable with only the minimum number of bolts and still be secure. I've seen some people may attach it and it's like to the whole front end and it's going to take an hour to do all those front end parts off. Mm-mm. You did you a great job with that. Ready Just to like get, ready to come off. Shove your hand in one bolt. Bolt goes in this way. You know how, where it goes. This, that was. It's a great example. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, uh, so let me talk something about the <laughs> RX7 versus the Civic because we didn't build the RX7 splitter, but we did build the Civic splitter. Hardware matters. Have the same hardware so you can pull that splitter with one wrench. Yeah, that's a great mm-hmm. thing. Like, mm-hmm. Hardware. Like just not, not, like well, that's rivets? a twelve. No, that's a thirteen. Yeah, that's rivets. A there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Like that's legit. Juice fasteners, not rivets. Like one common bolt that pulls that splitter off or that hood off or whatever yeah. it is. I love this idea. Everything's I'm, a ten. I'm also thinking of the. Um, I also hated these. And that's why they're giving me nightmares. Um, the side skirts on the Honda, when the Honda was too low, but you had to get under the car and pull. Yes. <laughs> it cut, it cut to, right it here. It your arm. Um, but they all came up with um, like quick disconnects. Quarter like, turns, yeah, yeah, you had like, the little. Yes. And then they never went back on because they were so annoying. And they were we were always the ones that were sticking our hands under there because Chris was in the car and he says, get under there fast. And so you would scrape your arm all the way under. That was because the car was too, too, um, too low, but at least it had quick disconnects on it. And as soon as we just connected them, we decided we're never putting them back on again. But the idea was there. I think we lost them. I think that was usually what happened. It was always like, we only have four. We need nine. Right. Yeah. Which we'll get to that later. (laughs) <laughs> but the idea is there so that's what yes. makes me think of yes you you're you're very good at that if you need to come off how do you figure out how to make it come off it's yeah. good it's so much easier to do that kind of thing well, a lot of this it's so much easier to do most of these things in your garage at home on a tuesday 
with a well-lit nice space with all of your tools to think about this than on a Saturday at three o'clock when you're supposed to be leading and or at and it's raining on a Friday and testing day and you're trying to get the car done. Those are terrible times to work mm -hmm, on your car. Mm -hmm. Ter terrible time to dig through the bolt box to find, go to Anything. the hardware store and get 10 that match that you need. Or get 12 and only use 10. Right. And then you have two extras. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. right, okay. Next one I've got is, I, I have to, like I said this a couple of shows ago. This is your jam. Clean stuff before you work on it. And then as you go, because that avoids grease creep. Because then that's much harder to work on later. Jeff Plus, literally doesn't understand Jeff this is, Jeff is a grease creep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I totally understand this. I'm just not. I, I no, just here, know high five that for that one. High five. High five. It, it is completely. Once I get greasy, I don't mind. I shouldn't say I don't mind because it's. You annoying. don't mind? How much you, about your friends? What, no, no. What I'm saying is if. If there's something leaking and you got to get under it to clean it, get under it and clean 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 it and then stay under it. Like when when the grease creep has happened, it's I'm going to It's already too late. Yeah. It's already too late. I'll sure. go down. I will s spray that damn gr simple green and wipe, wipe, wipe because We've all I know that. it makes my mm -hmm. life better in the future. But yeah. If I got to dive in, I'm not afraid. Yeah. No, none of us are. It's just nice to do it before. It's just more pleasant. Yeah. But then and, when, when the entire underside of the car or the entire hood or the entire entire car is covered in oil because you just lost four quarts and yes. it's gone everywhere. That's literally the story that's, I was just going to tell. Yeah. That's when Jeff is putting on his uh, cow birthing gloves. <laughs> and get, get <laughs> For me, it's also, it's not just about like the, the future you will thank you when they have a clean car to work on. You need it clean to see the future leaks. Sure. Good point. Like that to me is the more important reason for keeping everything clean and polishing things and scraping off all the crud, you know, the old crud. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. It just makes me think of how much we clean the Mazda engine bay this year. We had one incident after another, and then it was axle plus oil, and then another oil line. It was just, we kept cleaning it. And then we said, didn't we just clean this like two weeks ago? That's why you clean after the first one. Yep. yep. Got it. I love this next one. Mm -hmm, me too. Take it. Uh, uh, you want me to do it? Attach yes. things that you don't want to lose. I don't know who typed this, but this absolutely was going to be mine. Uh, we have bright pink or bright international orange string that holds our hood pins. They're standard hood pins because I'll be honest with you, all those little flush ones or whatever, they're crap. Just get good old regular hood, hood pins, but you don't want to ever lose them. So put a little piece of string or if you have the little wire. Not little, like make it. Like giant. I, yeah, make, I love the giant piece of string because the little wire that makes them dangle like five inches from the hood pin are great, but they're, you can't really see whether it's on or off from a distance. That giant pink string you can see from across the paddock if it's dragging on the ground. So future proof all these things, we attach our key. Like if we have an ignition key, we attach it to the, to the cutoff switch key. If we have, you know, if, if we have pins for fire bottles, they don't go anywhere. They're attached with a piece of string so that you can look in the trunk and see it there sitting there. It doesn't walk away if you tie a string to it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Those are all the, the examples we were thinking of. It's worth it. And it doesn't have to be like fancy string. Yeah. You just I, have I buy one. like a big giant ball of it again mm -hmm. at the Home Depot or Lowe's and mm -hmm. just always yep. have it. Good. You wrote it. Still, I've wrote a lot of these, but you guys can take some of them. Okay. Use the best quality parts you can most of the time. Not all the time, most of the time. And specifically avoid the economy grade. Like, you know, when you're at Rock Auto, they got, that's the first one that comes up. Just 
just check that away. No, do, do not care. Go for the good ones because the difference in price and the parts usually is so much less than the hassle of doing it again. So much less. I feel like you're, so how do you, how does, how does one know that? How do you, besides the first one, okay, I could check off the, the $2 one and all of the rest of them are 10 or 15 or 20, yeah. right? Like whatever it may be. Well, how do you know? Well, they give you categories usually like, you know, they'll have economy, daily driver, heavy duty, high performance, things like that. Go to the heavy duty, high performance if you can, you know, go especially to all, all for endurance racing, but yeah. Well, even for the street car, like I don't want okay. something to break in, you know, no, tomorrow neither do in I. your car, right? Nope. So buy the good stuff. Okay. If you can find something that it, some company that is making it that is an OEM supplier, that, that that means they make stuff for the manufacturers. An example is um, a company called Lemforder makes control arms and ball joints and whatnot for <clears throat> Mercedes and BMW and things like that. Or if you're buying spark plugs, buy NGK is usually because they're usually the OEM supplier for a lot of stuff for your asian cars sure <laughs> sure well e yeah. no even like the, the cadillac the oem spark plug is an ngk mm -hmm. cool so try to find the ones that are oem suppliers like delphi is often an oem supplier I was say delphi bosch yeah. denso is Denso. for yeah. toyotas right you know, find the one that is the oem supplier and use that if it's you know not that kind of thing try just you know ask around or what's a good brand for that thing. Like brakes, get the, you know, respect Raybestos makes a million different compounds. Well, you know what? You can call Raybestos and say, here's what I'm doing with my car. Which, which pad do you recommend for it? And it's not going to be the $8 R line pads, but for example, the specialty truck pads that we all Love run of them on the toe pig, right? They're amazing. And they're like 40 bucks. Okay. I, I am a bit of a brand snob if i have a brand that works i'll go back to it again and again and again yeah and I, I you know i will pay a few dollars extra and i don't I don't always know what the you know the 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 oem brand is but like if there's a timken berry that's the one i'm buying yeah, and we'll ask around for people that you've done this long enough to know what, what might be the good one. Like, you're right, Timken is good for bearings. I also like SKF and National, but sometimes it's the same part in different boxes. Like, you buy a Timken bearing for the Mazda, it's it's a Koyo Japan bearing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's good stuff. Um, yeah, just other. it's so terrible to do it again because you got a crappy part. Mm -hmm. Get the good one. Mm -hmm. Love Unless that. Unless it's, you know, BFE, Nowhere. Well, yeah, no I mean, sometimes that's all you, you can get. Sometimes you get what you get, and you don't get yeah. upset. I mean, that that happens. I think it happened with the with the three hundred Z, the bearings. We could not find good bearings for it. Yep. All right. Okay. Anyway, other race prepping tips. I love Maybe these things. Less car prep, more race prep. Mm, some of them, uh, yeah, but the race prep. Um, make as much as make much food and everything that you can prep it ahead of time. Uh, one of the really good examples was uh, for a while, I was bringing a whole pile of eggs, uh, probably in their case to the track and mixing them in a bowl. And Jeff said, why don't you just break them at home, put them, mix them and then bring them in a container. And I was like, Ta -da. That's, uh, a hiking. that's a hiking camp. Yeah. Camp right. So yeah, these yeah. are the kind of things that are just like, okay, do it. It's, it's a lot easier when you wake up, you're still trying to make pancakes from scratch. Let's just pour some eggs in rather than try to actually break them, measure things like just don't do that at the track because there's so much else going on. Take that away from the, the prep and work that you need to do. So um, I think there's a lot of, I mean, just we've talked about prep and food and, you it, know, make, it's make been freezer. a long time. We did a whole show. Let's bring it back. Like, we should bring it back. Sure. Let's do it. Cause then you can get some good ideas for upcoming, upcoming races. So yeah, we do that a lot. We make our meals ahead of time. We freeze a lot of things. Uh, and most of the times it, it can be freeze frozen. We think at least two, three weeks ahead. So get it done while you're still trying to build the car and, and then, uh, and then, you know, it's done ready to go before race weekend. So even I'm stuff all... like park cooking the bacon makes mm -hmm. it really easy to just freshen it up in the morning and it yep. cooks more evenly and it works really nicely. And somebody could throw that on and we're cooking that while we're prepping the pancakes or whatever else we're cooking. So yeah, no, there's a lot of things. Let's bring, we can bring that, that uh, topic back just to make, to refresh you, but bacon yeah. prep as much I think as it's possible. a good March topic when, before we get in heading to pit race. 
Sounds get good. everyone refreshed on that. Great. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say next in race prepping tips, bring prepared complete assemblies of parts. An example I'll use is a steering knuckle. How many times have we had anything in the steering knuckle go or bearing go or, you know, lug bolt snap off, whatever it is. All right. Just put a new one on. Yeah. It takes mm -hmm. half an hour. We're done. That's you've, going slowly, like no problem. You've saved our races. You've saved other people's races. You have, yeah. I, think I saw this in like Ford versus Ferrari, right? <laughs> Isn't that why they won? Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's just so much easier to do mm -hmm. that. And then, you know, then you've got all your spares done. You're not searching around to find a dumpster to press a bearing into with a floor jack. <clears throat> not that I've oh, done anything RV. like that. I was going to say RV. RV. Yeah, yeah, RV. That's our yeah. favorite. Well, when I couldn't find a good RV, I found a 20-yard dumpster. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope it was right? full. <laughs> yeah, it was It was empty, and I was lifting up the side of the dumpster as I was doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's so much easier. Just mm -hmm. have it ready. Yeah. There you go. It's so Done. much. Like, press it at home with a press or go find something heavy. Like, that's just, by the time you've, you've wasted so much time and effort. Yeah. Just trying to do that. And you that need those track. spares anyway. It's not hard to go get a junkyard knuckle. At, I'm just using these as examples to get a junkyard knuckle, clean it up, get all the new stuff in. There you go. Now you're ready. Electrolysis, you right? You can just get the. Get I mean, they don't have to go that far. I mean, no, I know. I'm just thinking of all the spares. Experiment. Right. But also, the, all of the spares I was thinking of all our control arms, especially unobtainium. I know we've talked about this not too long ago, but unobtainium parts, like bring those and they're all ready to go. Well, that's, that's the next thing. Well, spares oh, in sorry. general. Yes. Have spares. Like you need spares. How many times has our race been saved? Or at least, you know, not gonna win, but at least have a continued wonderful time because we had some good spares. Yep. Like constantly. Because mm -hmm. we brought stuff that is probably gonna fail or can be made to get fixed. Yeah. Like you know, little things. Or or if not for you guys, for for you yourselves, someone else, you can save their weekend. There's plenty of people who've needed a, a thing and uh, okay, we had it. They got back out in track, had a much better time. Right, right. And you know, yeah. we, we same things happen to us. So it, all the spares that are common wear items on your car, bring those. You just, you've got to like things like brakes, wheel bearings, ball joints, anything that goes were or is, you know, wears out, mm -hmm. bring those. And then if possible, keep them in a convenient place. Like not just your trailer, but an example I'll use is on the Civic. Actually, in many cars, there's a little rubber bit that sticks into the clutch pedal that pushes on the clutch switch or the brake switch. Sorry, it's all the brake. So that is when, when the brake is up, it's pushing on the switch, the brake lights are off. As soon as you push down on the brake, that yeah, comes off switch opens or and switch opens and the lights come on. Right. Well, when that thing degrades and falls off as it occasionally does, your brake lights are on all the time. When your brake lights are on all the time, you basically have no brake lights you, and you get black flagged and you can flag in you. And, yeah. So when I replaced this preemptively in the civic, it came in a pack of two. The second one I have taped up under the dash right by the brake pedal. So if we ever lose it, it's right there. Love you this. <laughs> like what that's the kind of thing where you you but can think, jeff get a freaking dead pedal no yeah i always put dead <laughs> pedals in now yes you do now because you, you now. two because two Everyone out of four people right I've we never heard so much meowing in my people, life <laughs> some people meow more than others meow, and then meow, meow, meow. it's easier for sign you to me just, up i am the meower i'm the, i'm right behind you so that's the problem is it you too i had to wait man where's my dead pedal where's my dead pedal just like a dead pedal yeah goodness anyway but keep them where you can get them that's all. If you can keep it near where it's going to fail, even and it's safe to do so, even better. This is just like the rope on the 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 pin, the hood pin, or the 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 key. Yeah. Or the key, you know I mean? yeah. Just it's you. You got to leave it there. Mm -hmm. Just mark it, just tape it, stick or just it. make a instead of have a key, make it a screwdriver. Oh yeah, that's different. Hey, you could, <laughs> a different story. Hey, JB welding screwdrivers into ignition switches is totally an acceptable choice. It worked anyway. out. I mean, you don't have to remember a key. That's true. <laughs> All right. 
Go ahead. Keep, keep us going here, Jeff. Oh, where are we? I've lost track. What's the, where We're are we? at prep oh, I can go. So, tips. Okay, Chrissy, go for it. Prep for the track. So especially if you're going to a new track, but also chances are you're going to a track that you haven't been into a, in a year, let's say. So um, I love track maps. They take time. They take effort. But I really find you can dive into a track, you dive into the details. And then when you get there, you feel like you've studied already. So obviously you need to remember how to get the track, get the car back on track, but um, you remember where things are. So making a track map is all, uh, tra excuse me, track map is awesome. I watch video while I'm making the track map. So you push play on the computer while it's, you're looking at the piece of paper and you're saying, well, what is that track look like and remember the banking and how does this, you know, where are the candy stripes here and things like that. So watching the video while you're making track map, really good. Um, and also, especially if you're going to a new place, iRacing. So if you have the opportunity to be able to go for iRacing to understand and remember where, where things are and which way the track goes, I think that's really where, because you're sitting in the seat, where does it go? So I, iRacing is another good one. Yeah. Prep. I did not, understand the power of iRacing or as a simulator until I used it to learn a new track. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's huge. all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I watch videos and I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just not as visual of a learner, but the I could watch a video of a new track and I was like, I, I still don't know where it goes left or right. Absolutely. I sit in that sim and I, and I get it. Well, also because you have to look that way, like <laughs> you have to like go and drive it rather it's than all your senses. Yeah, yeah. I, I, watch again, watching I, it, and and I don't, I'm not good at I, I don't think I'm, you know, I'm not learning points and lefts, and I, I'm learning the lefts and the rights, right, and and what a track does and where it will catch you and those things. Um, I I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Can I put my dad hat on? Sure. sure. Every time I go camping with all the scouts, I bring 27 extra jackets and extra raincoats and extra blankets. Like the back seat of my truck looks like a blanket fort full of glut jackets and blankets because there's always some schmedley that doesn't know how to dress for the weather. Okay. You need to know that going to a track is an outdoor experience. I don't care if you have an RV. You need to be prepared for all weather. One set of rain clothes might not work because it's going to get wet and nobody wants to sleep in wet or wear wet on the second day. You need to be prepared for not just the weather you think is going to be there, but all the potential weather that might show up. Especially with the swings in the day. So there's plenty of times where it's pretty, pretty, you know, could be okay in the, in the day, especially if the sun is out, but then super cold at night, vice versa, right? Like it's, there's plenty of times where you're, you really do need to dress for five different events almost. Yeah. I, I don't look at the weather where we're going because I'm ready for all of it. Oh, I think we do. You sure, do. look at the weather if you want to. But I'm saying just because, oh, look, it's going to be sunny and warm. I won't need that pair of thermal pants. You know what? You need the thermal pants. Yes. Pack it. But sometimes it's like, it. how many layers do I need? <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> right? I'm, so I'm, it's going to be cold absolutely. at Pitt, right, in April. But like last time it was hail storms and snowing and gale force winds. Yeah. You're just like, that's when you need five, four layers, not just two. I'm just saying, in Connecticut, in August, you can be like, hey, Jeff, do you have a warmer hat? I probably have. Sure. Okay, I was trying to think of a time when you didn't, but I can't come up with one, so you win. <laughs> I'm actually thinking of times where I I, I borrowed your flip-flops because I didn't have any. <laughs> so there are times. Okay, a. Ooh, for you, not for me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a rain weekend at Jersey. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I think instead of getting stuck in the mud, I used your flip flops. That's I'm fine. Sure I'm, that not, I'm not upset. No. Uh, yeah. So there it is. Okay. Uh, I like it. Look, here's the deal Chrissy is the best at this, and I'm so glad. And I have converted because my tools have changed the way that I, the way that I pack. But you need to pack prepared in 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 ways that can be packed and unpacked and moved in a in a quick and easy manner so 
you can't put things in five gallon buckets. You shouldn't be throwing things in bags. Although I still do that, but it's like Sasha shows up with those giant tubs and like pours the the the. It's the like giving me on it's, the ground. It's giving it's, me anxiety just thinking about it. Like yeah. it's, I don't like it. Chrissy has tubs like that are specific. Oh, we didn't get there. Tub. Hold on, I didn't get oh, there sorry. yet. Oh, that's a, that's later. Okay, so yeah, don't don't do a Sasha. Um, the greatest thing that I ever did was get a toolbox with wheels. Mm -hmm. I future Jeff has thanked past Jeff for that purchase Yay. a thousand times over because I yank it in. I mean, that's a Chris Abbott right there. Open the lid. And that becomes a place where I can throw my wallet or my, my, all of your shit or all of my shit. And if I have to, I just close that damn lid and push it in the trailer. Welcome to that, Jeff. I know that I'll never put things away. So have a place where I can take my mess and just close it up and take mm. it back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But fantastic. Yes. Don't All do right. That. So we're at the race now. What things can we do while we're at the race that will make future Chrissy or Chris or Jeff happy? I'm going to keep going with some of this weather stuff. Please. Prep your car for the rain if you know it's going to rain. Get the Barbasol on there. Get the rag on a stick. Work on ventilation options. Something. Have windshield wipers. Have windshield wipers. wipers is right? literally what I was just like, going to say. Don't like, be the blind fool with the fogged window. Like how many oh, times at Thompson? Because we're right by the paddock, the, the track off. We saved we, people. We oh, legit yeah. saved people. Cars come in and they just are like they're going one mile an hour hitting the cones no because idea. they cannot <laughs> no see idea. and we had a one after another people come in we wiped their windshield down they pulled back out and they drove away we, we had just a windshield had like, service we yeah. did we should have charged a nickel <laughs> we should have where's the dimes do you have any dimes, dimes? <laughs> yeah yeah so um, yeah you know yeah, it's yeah, gonna it's rain one. probably you know so do something about it. And it, at the very least, Barbara saw the inside, clean the outside, have some wipers. Okay. Like you've got rain X something, do something. Don't be that guy. I, this, that this should be a Tuesday at home deal. I don't mean Barbara saw, but your wipers should be part of the regular check. If your race car has sat outside all winter, get a new set of wipers. Put them on because you're going to order stuff from Rock Auto anyway. So, just pick, once your order is done, go and find the ones that are shipping from the same warehouse and buy two, and maybe yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. save you 20. I mean, we do that anyway. <laughs> and that's <laughs> we do that in life. That's a life, life hack. Yeah. But just, I've it's so sad seeing the people at the race that are just being unsafe or can't move just because all they just didn't prepare this little tiny bit. Yep. And, and continuing on the theme of weather. When it's not ideal weather, do your best to keep things dry or warm or cool, whatever is, is the preferred method. Or and then if, if they get the other way, do everything you can to get them correct for their next like use. Like what? Nothing, like what, what like are you talking about? If you're you know, try not to get your race suit super wet if you can help it. Oh, definitely. sometimes you can't help it, but try not to. You know, if you can wear a garbage bag until right before you go in the car, do it. If you can, you know, if you can put a little deflector on the outside of the car to try to deflect some of the spray out of it, mm -hmm. do it. You know, don't just stand out in the rain. You know, try, you know, like try to stay a little bit dry because nothing worse than putting on a wet, cold, terrible race. Whatever right. to think about it. So and there's uh, no dryers. In in a in an admission that will surprise no one, I'm a few pounds heavier than I was previous to COVID. Uh, my wife looked at me and said, "When's the last time you bought a new race suit? Is it gonna fit?" <gasps> oh, no. and I have tried it on. I checked it. That you know, no, don't worry, it's still fine. But my race suit, our ra I, the second I come out of the car, I take it off. Yep. Yeah. And I don't wrench in it and I don't hang around in it. And I don't partially I, because I you might two have sit. a very light color suit. Right. But I sit, <laughs> I might hydrate for a minute. That sucker comes off. I don't mm -hmm. hang around in my shoes. I take care of my race equipment 
because future Jeff does not want to buy new race equipment. It's not just race equipment too. It's like your work gloves. The ones oh. like, if that's all you've got or just like, oh, I only have one sweater this weekend. Right. Or I was anything. thinking of sh like shoes too. So like, yeah. if you know that you're going to have to be like, bring two pairs of shoes, if you can, or bring boots 12, if, if you're Jeff. Well, no, sure. Sure. Right. But I mean, like if you, yes, if you know, it's going to be actual rain and you're going to have to stomp around in a mud puddle, like Jersey sometimes turns into mud, then, you know, if you only have one pair of sneakers and they get gross, no then you, right. Then you're just gonna have to wear them. So no, I think there's, there's lots of body part and, and future you will thank you for yeah. either trying to stay dry or whatever the case may be or, or hanging it up or putting it a blower on it or, or any or of those having things. that dry pair that doesn't leave the rv yeah sure because you're like i totally. got indoor shoes and i got outdoor shoes oh, just don't. like my grandmother's house like chris does mm -hmm. i yep. have my indoor shoes and my outdoor shoes I, yeah i'm for this plan and i'm the <laughs> king of chaos you guys you are the king of chaos. Um, the Earl of Jankerton. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I, I cannot say this one nearly enough. We're at the race. Uh, hydrate. Drink before, drink during, drink after, drink a lot after. And I'm talking about water or and or Gatorade or something like that. And then you drink the booze. And then you start drinking water after that. So I am all about making sure that you hydrate, hydrate because it's very easy to... Uh, for it to get away from you. So we have um, water jugs, but at pit race, our paddock was up at the garage and our, our um, like the water was at the RV, which was very far away. I found that I did not drink nearly enough water because it wasn't anywhere close and it wasn't convenient. So I think we eventually made that happen, but it was, it took a, probably a hungover morning for us to realize me to realize that I would just wasn't drinking enough water because it just wasn't around. So I think, um, have, have somebody have that be somebody's job. So like, just make sure that water's around. And I'm going to throw a plug in for a product called tri oral, which yeah, they should totally I, sponsor us. <laughs> right. This it's it's oral rehydration salts. It's WHO approved stuff for like you know if you're in a disaster zone and there's no clean water and they're trying to get you rehydrated, they give you this stuff in water. Damn if this stuff doesn't work amazing. Like if you feel dehydrated, you take this with some water. Half an hour later, you feel fine. It's unbelievable. Can I derail us slightly with a TikTok story? <laughs> sure, sure. I have discovered a new thing with okay. that. What do you what, what's that <clears throat> salts again? The the rehydration salts. salts. The yeah. rehydration salts. Are you familiar with what a Borg bottle is? No. No. Okay. Learn it on learn it on TikTok, everybody. Take I try not to learn gallon anything on TikTok. Jug of you know, water, like a milk bottle. You got know, it. Like you buy you buy water. Yep. You pour half of it out. Okay. You put in the hydration salts. Okay. And then you pour in however many ounces of your favorite alcohol. And then you carry that around the music <laughs> festival or the lake or wherever you are all day. And you take a magic marker and you put a cute name on it, like Borgtastic or whatever. And it's what all the cool kids are drinking when they're doing their day drinking these days. <laughs> Look it up, Borg. So Why? It's basically using, Borg? using rehydration I have no salts idea. as a mixer. Uh, okay. And it's not good. Uh, it's so we have a lemon and we have a plain, like unflavored. An unflavored is yeah, we think we mix it with a Gatorade because it oh, tastes that bad. I just Googled it. Oh, blackout rage gallon. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way that that cannot be successful. It sounds like a terrible. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Saturday is Saturday. feedback. Fettelborg. Yep, we're waiting for Metal to mute something. Okay, I think it's better. Okay, it's better. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. No, well, it was just uh, giving a lot of feedback before. That was all. Oh my God. Justin Beborg. <laughs> This I is, learned uh, I learned a new thing on TikTok I wanted to share. I think this these is days. an awful idea. Oh Kids god. These okay. Days. 
Well, uh, uh, you heard Metzel has joined us now for live from the Miata. Oh, but now we Good have evening, everything sir. off except everything's so, off. It's dark, you know. It's it's no, no. You, if, you, if you need it off to drive, it's okay, dude. We can. We want to yeah, hear you more than see you. Las Vegas. If I turn on my interior lights, you can't see anything. It's so dimly lit here. Yes. <laughs> well, certain parts okay. are better than others. All right, Metzel. We are on. We are doing the uh, the you know, helping your future you and the. Yeah, what- and I'm troubled that I log in to the Helping the Future You and see Jeff picture of homemade booze in a gallon jug. Yes. I don't think that's the Help Future Jeff. But yeah, but you put the hydration salts in it so you're less hungover. That's helping and, your future and, you. And, and this is what the TikTok did. You pour half of it out, like the, the 16 ounces out so you have room for the alcohol. And you take two of the hydration packs and you put one in the Najin and you put that by your bed. So after you've been drinking the Borg all day, you drink the 16 <laughs> ounces of hydration fluid before you go to sleep. Oh, my God. Helping Anyone who refers to you. TikTok as the TikTok should probably not be taking advice <laughs> from TikTok. The Definitely TikTok. not 50-year-old white men who hang out on TikTok. <laughs> the TikTok. <laughs> All right, let me oh, let me let me keep moving on while mental okay, okay, catches okay. up with us. Uh, when you're at the racetrack and you want to thank your future self, you need to plan for a quick exit. I like this I one. know you're not the person who's going to be running out of the track before things happen, but the worst thing you want is an extra twenty or thirty minutes packing. So pre-pack, put away your tools before you need it. Have everything ready. Have those totes ready to go. The last meal. Like Why this. not a grab and go last meal? That's what who's we do. driving last? Okay. The person who's driving last should not be the first person who's driving the RV. Okay. Or at least, you know, have everything prepped. So when the car comes off, you only really have to deal with the car, not the car and the stuff. And I know you're not going to put away every tool, but organize it, have it ready to roll. I like it. We we do sandwiches, walk away with sandwiches, and we make a whole bar. And the table is the last thing to go in. And we make it so that you make you pick your cookies, you pick your make your sandwich. We say last call, everything fill goes in water. the cooler. Yep. Yeah, fill the water before we throw it away. But yeah, I love that idea. Making sure that you're you can fold a couple of tables and put away the hot tub before noon on Sunday. Do it. <laughs> yes, we should. All right. I like your next one. Go ahead. All right. So I, you don't get on any other racing show. Put your hot tub away before lunchtime on the final endurance racing. That's, that's right. That's an E1R yeah. exclusive. Yeah. An E1R exclusive. Okay, here it is. Do, 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 do. Don't go to bed and say, meh, we could fix that tomorrow. We have plenty of time. Mm-mm. Don't Never. start your drinking until the work is done. Do the work first. Okay. Capital uh, you, offense. You can, you can start your drinking, but sure. finish the oh, work. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer in your hand while you're wrenching. I'm just saying you wrench first, then you go to the fire and watch Sasha fall into it. Or sorry, Not Yuri Sasha, fall into Yuri. it. Thank you. Um, we had, we were, uh, we, there was this race called Capital Offense. It was at Summit Point. For those of you who have been to Summit Point, you know that there is Jesus hours and you're not allowed to do anything before noon, right? Yes. Noon. Um, so we had to change a clutch slave and we were like, that's like a 30 minute job. Let's party. We'll do that in the morning. The part was wrong. We broke something. There was project creep. We were going to win B. C. C? Was, was it C? I can't remember. It was the boat. Oh, okay. The boat was C. never B. We were going to win C, and we missed the green flag because we did not wrench before we partied. So we, from it's that crazy. moment on, will always wrench before party. Again, you're just putting off the job for future you, and you screwed future you. Mm-hmm. Shoot. That was, that was a hard one. It was. We were, we were mm-hmm. sad about that one. All right. So, what are we going to do after the race? Oh, Metzl, anything that you want to add to this? I don't want to. At the race, ways At... to help future you. At the race. Stop me if you guys already covered this one, but you guys give me a slightly hard, good natured hard time about 
writing things down constantly. I, you know, if I got a notepad or a notebook or I'm putting it into my phone and it's everything you want done to that car before the next race, have that, have that list going through dead pedal or adjust the seat or rewrap the seat belts or inspect this deep inside part. Cause then you can sit down and map out between the end of that race and the time that the car has to be ready, the work that you want done, rather than pulling four all-nighters the week before you load the car into the trailer, you can actually get in front of a lot of that work. Love it. Start your work list while you're at the track. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So anyway, after the race, go ahead, Chris. This folds right into this. Um, prep for the next race right after you come home. Soon as you are home, you know all the stuff that is broken because you just thought about it at the race. Yeah, um, you know the car is filthy. You know that 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 uh, there's certain things that are wrong, and there's certain things you don't know are wrong, and you don't know how long it's going to take to get those parts or how long it's going to take to work. Who knows? So, get the car ready the best time to get the right car ready for your next race is as soon as you come home from the prior race. This is such a thank you. Thank you past Chris and Chrissy for doing this. It is so nice to know that the car is in storage and it is right. It's basically race ready that there is a, a you know, two, two day, two evenings worth of stuff that we need to prep. But um, it's also the minutia of things that you remember at the race. Like maybe you, I was like, oh yeah, you know what? I was in the car and you know, this belt was doing a weird thing. You remember those things that maybe you didn't write down, but there are things when you're looking at it, you will remember. And it was something that, you know, maybe you didn't say out loud, but you're looking at it and it's all fresh. I like it. Like this example of the Mazda after New Hampshire, I needed a few things after it broke with 10 minutes to go. And I didn't expect it to take very long. Well, the car didn't go into storage until December. So that tells you how long it took. And uh, and we still have wait. fixes to do, actually. Now. No, it's, or, it's actually done now. It's ready unless we want to make mods. Yes, it is. It is, you know, like you said, two evenings away, but it's things like flush the coolant out, put, you know, flush the brake fluid because I don't want to do correct. that in the before the winter, um, put the tires. good tires on it. Mm -hmm. Those things you can't do ahead of time, but... Uh, everything else is done until unless we were to change anything. So, yeah, but it, I was not expecting it to take six weeks to finish prepping that car, but it did. So it's a good thing. I didn't say, I'll just do this car's not that broken. I'll just, you know, do this in April mm -hmm. and then I'm thrashing. Yep. Very important. Uh, here comes one from the don't do as Jeff does. Jeff doesn't have enough storage. Jeff wishes he could take the race car tires off the race car and store them in a climate controlled. Uh, I end up just like bagging them and I, I'm, I'm not able to get them. But but you really need to be careful storing race tires over winter because they're going to get outgassed. They're going to get old. They're going to get hard. Temperature is going to destroy your race car tires if you don't control them and control the atmosphere around them. Yep. Yeah. Ideally a out of the UV and in a temperature, a stable temperature, not too hot, not too cold environment. Yep. Ours go in the basement and the dark side in the corner. Mine go in the garage, but I wrap them in tight bags. One set has to live in the, in the trailer. So you never know when you're going to like crash your race car and those tires are going to sit around for two years. Yes. I shouldn't have two fresh sets. It's amazing. Uh, okay. uh, 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 Chrissy, okay. Mazzle, anything after the race you want to think about? Uh, oh, did you guys already cover the uh, checklist? After the race checklist? No, tell us more. Well, it's just, just, just the creation of the checklist. And, and it goes into, you know, it, it does center around the car, but um, one of the greatest things ever is you guys said the checklist, you leave it under the windshield wiper, especially when it's multiple cars. And I look at it, I got a beer in my hand. I look at it, I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can do this thing. I can do this thing. And then it's signed off and everyone's invested in the car, but also any changes you want to make to that checklist or any changes you want to make to your toolkit or to your spares kit, um, have that, have that plan 
as soon as you get back from the racetrack when it's clear in your mind. Not just stuff you want to do to the car, but the stuff you want to do for your support. Good idea. Good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chrissy, I think I've got one that we're on stuff that you, you have. Don't not just get the car ready for the next race, get all the other stuff, like your you know, boxes of camping stuff and the food boxes and all that stuff. If you have to let those sit for two months, they can get pretty nasty. I mean, I clean them. Yeah. I do I do not pack until the day before the, the but week you get before. It. You don't just leave it until. Oh no, but the, yeah, now. sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's a fine a- answer for after yeah. the race. Yeah, yeah, we leave everything in the like spare spare room in the other room, and I unload it. And there's no food that can't live for months in a box or something like that. Yeah, S- scrub the cooler when you get home. Oh, oh yeah. always. Like, <laughs> like I know always. that sounds obvious. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> but there are people who don't do it. Ew. Yes. No, we scrub like they everything. Forget. They're like, they open a cooler and they go, oh crap. I oh no. To scrub it. No, I mean, it, it will smell you've discovered. Maybe they took everything out of it. Yeah, I mean, no. You, know, you know, they put the cold stuff away, but they open it up and there's like still a half frozen thing of water in it. And they're like, oh. Yeah. Ours live in the lawn before they just yep. get in loaded. The sun, get them all dry. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we they leave, they stay outside until. We wash we them, scrub then they, them. Yeah, we yeah. scrub them, but like they go, they don't even come into the house. They just stay in the lawn and then we wash them and then we bring them in and then unload and things like that. But yeah, yeah. Clean everything out. Which is especially, I mean, especially from October to April. Oh my God. I can't even <laughs> imagine. Um, but we definitely think about what's going to last that long. And sometimes it's every other month for, for us, but um, yeah, clean everything out. It's a good one. Yeah. I, I, that's what I just do. So I didn't think anything of it. All right, next category, things you can buy or build to make your future life better. I'm going to say that special tools are worth it for something you do regularly, but it's got to be regularly and to make it worth it. Like an example I will use is I have a special snap-on tool for Honda valve adjustment, and this makes it go so fast. It is unbelievable how much faster it is. And this is something you should be doing regularly on most Hondas, especially if we're racing them. So uh, yeah, buy the special tool. If you're going to, if you're going to use it enough, it's totally worth it. Yeah. The good ball joint separator, the Mm -hmm. coil compressor, like these tools are going to make each job easier by the, but I've only got one to do. Why would I buy Because you're going to do another one and then you're going to do another one. And then you're going to, and this is a new one for me. Build special purpose items if you can't get what you need. And my example is the new fuel cart we just built. I think that's going to be fantastic. I think it's going to work so much better than just the random plastic radio flyer wagon that we had when Steve's, Steve's kids outgrew it that doesn't really fit four jugs and the side falls off. Yes. And you can put three and a half in. Like the fourth one has to go. Like, it's just it's, it's, it's yeah, tilted on the other ones. But then again, that knocks the side off as you're walking over it and then it yeah. falls out. And, right. And I'm so, pretty sure I know like Steve's kids are ready to like move out. Like that flyer yeah. wagon is really really old yeah yeah that's so, great so sometimes you make just it. have to make something and you'll thank past you for making you such a nice thing <laughs> it's gonna be awesome can't wait um, to use it we've said this one a thousand times before but anybody who's buying sfi belts wh- what are you doing <laughs> like the fia belts last longer they cost a third more and they last twice as long especially if you're a new jersey racer fii belts good safety equipment in general i think is is worth the penny and future you will thank you when you're wearing the lighter helmet or the lighter race suit or if you're ever in a fire that you put on that fireproof underwear so do it And also the more comfortable of stuff, the um, the cool belts that are narrow where they go over your Hans and then they're wide on your body so they don't pinch and they pull down really easy and they're easy to tighten while you're on the straightaway and they're easy to, to undo and they are more expensive. But every time I get into a car with those, I am so thankful. I think we've we've turned people onto those because yeah. we have like we like them. 
uh, uh, Scudia Baruqua, uh, uh, had them in his Instagram. And I said, Hey, love the G force pull down belts. Recommend totally. it for everybody. Yep. We do. Uh, so here's one that we saw on some other cars and I say, Oh, I'm I, doing that from now on. I don't know anything about, I don't, we don't do this. Go ahead. I like uh, it. Ooh, we do on the, on the ooh. RX three, 4.8. We don't on the uh, Mazda. Betty definitely does this. And yeah, Betty does it. Mark or build jack points. All right. I have a little arrow on the rocker that says this is where the jack point is. That will be really helpful because and I'm pretty sure we do it wrong plenty of times. It's it's not that. It's why waste time because you're not going to be the person who's always doing the job. So this is everything. This is label all your spares. This is mark your jack points. If you have three different tubs or four different boxes of, of, of brake pads, like old brake pads, write on the box what's in it. Mark or build that jack point. Make it so you can say on the radio or yelling across the paddock, it's in the trailer. It's in a box. It says new pads. On our uh, Thunder Hill car, the BMW E46, we used reflective tape and did triangles at all the jack points around the car. So, because we knew we'd have to be jacking it up at night in the paddock where not necessarily the best light was. We want to be able to find it quickly. And that, that has saved us multiple times. Mm hmm yeah we should do that we don't do it we just i just wait for chris to tell me that i did it wrong i just can't believe after all the times we've jacked our same exact cars up that everyone doesn't know what the jack points are by now i just wait it's all it's wrong okay my car i know where the jack points are i still do it wrong Whatever. all right let's yes, mom and dad passively aggressively fighting again. <laughs> let's talk about non-race stuff okay just makes your life better let's do that so we've talked we've alluded to it and we've talked about it a little bit but my biggest thing is um what i call the lemons box so i have a i have three different tubs there this is how i organize myself for this is for all for the paddock um how do i make it so that i have stuff for meals but i have other stuff i have random hey i need this stuff i need a pair of scissors i need a a, a long lighter i need something random I probably have it. And what I call my lemons box, everything that you could need, and you probably won't be able to create it the first time, but it's after somebody says, Hey, I need that. Either you put one in there, you get an extra one, get a cheap something rather, just so it makes life easier later. And, uh, and make sure that you leave those things in there. So don't dump your whole kitchen into a box and say, I'm just going to take everything from here because then when you come home, you're going to say, okay, let me take this whole, everything out of the box. You're going to say, yeah, I used those scissors. They were really great for what I needed to, but I need now I need them in, in my kitchen and I have to go put them back. Uh, so get, get the designated pairs. And, uh, and what you can do is watch my video right here. Oh, Oh, it's, it's going to be right up there somewhere. Right up here. Uh, so I I made a video. It was actually two years ago. I dug through all of our videos. And it is how I set up my paddock. Uh, I go through all of my coolers. I go through all of my boxes and uh, some helpful hints on how to do a lot of the food. So watch that. And uh, Mental, we talked about bringing that show back just because it's now it's time. A yeah, it's been a while. So we, um, we cook a lot of new stuff since then. We do. Yeah, we've got a lot of good recipes. We know what work, works really well. We really oscillate our, we don't really like to have chili when it's 97 degrees outside. No. Um, and we don't usually have cold cut sandwiches when it's two degrees outside. So we really oscillate a lot of our meals and um, we split things up. We've got a lot of good ideas and it's been a while So since we talked about that. So uh, watch my video, uh, at least click through it and I'll show you some of the things that I do, but uh, get yourself a box that's not necessarily the box that you keep in the garage. I keep my stuff separate. Somebody always steals my paper towels. I always bring my own paper towels and somebody <laughs> always steals them. Um, but because of course the car paper towels are much more necessary than the paddock paper towels but then when you get pancakes all over yourself and you say oh where are the paper towels i say i don't know they're over in the garage because somebody stole them anyway bring your own stuff leave it in the paddock and then 
leave your garage stuff over there. Hashtag triggered. Right? Saying. Mic drop. <laughs> All right. At CMP, I- when I arrived late, we got up, me, Hamsa, and Jim, and we were looking for coffee, and we were looking in Chrissy's, the, the box and the cooler box, and we were legitimately afraid to disturb certain things, and we had to, like, put it back in order while we were trying to find just coffee because we did not want to incur the wrath of the chances are it was made and all you did to push it was push the on button because it was like two hours before anyone got up Um, i make it i I make i make it the night before so all you have to do is push the on button because it was was future you future you exactly future you making the coffee the night before thinking about future us she wasn't even thinking about future chrissy she was thinking about future other people correct that's how i work Go ahead, Chris. Right. I've got one is make sure the tow vehicle is the most reliable one you have because there is nothing worse than breaking down on your tow. And I'm going to say this goes for your trailer too. Trailer maintenance is important. Yeah, trailer maintenance. And is this important. is, this is all that is is saving future you from problems is by just doing a little bit to make sure that your tow vehicle and trailer are not your problem. That this weekend, is that's so the last thing you need. Jeff, how many times has your trailer broken down? Or I had some shitty trailers. But he has a new trailer now, but it's how many, times, how many times you've times... Adjust, adjusted your trailer brakes or packed Real your bearings? bearings. Yeah. Uh, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely time. <laughs> oh my All goodness. Right. I, okay. I have an I have a trailer related future you thing. Okay. Right. If you're building a race team and you're trying to figure out what it's going on and what you're going to do, here's a tip from Jeff. If you have the means, get a bigger trailer. Have room to grow. Well prepped teams are going to bring a lot of crap. We've already talked about having steering knuck, excuse me, like uh, wheel knuckles and, you know, d- tubs. You're going to need a bigger trailer than you think. And if you have a Miata and you're like, oh, no, it's no big deal. I could just get the little trailer because I have a little Miata and I won't take the tools and I will be very efficient. So I don't need the bigger truck and I don't need this and I don't need this. I don't need this. And then on RacingJunk.com, you see that Camaro and you're like, ooh, I could really beat those suckers if I just had V8 power. Oh, but now I need a bigger trailer and a bigger truck and a bigger this and a bigger that. Or you decide to bring a hot tub. Just have a, if you have the means, bigger trailer. I mean, uh, Bruce and Greg's trailer is probably as big as they are allowed to tow. It is yeah, that's packed, why they have it. but they have a small car and it is a, it is packed <laughs> to yeah. the gills. If you open the doors, it stuff falls out, stuff jumps out, leaps out. It is stuffed. So yes, I think you can test. And it's fairly like well, it's pretty well organized. Yeah, They've got stuff in well, boxes it, and no, Bruce yeah, they, packs it well. He does. Yeah, but it is stuffed. So yeah, I'm I'm all about it. Get get a bigger trailer. If you're if you're living with the uh non enclosed, enclosed will change your life. Yeah. It will truly change your life. Does anyone have any last minute tips? Before we move on to our favorite part of the show. No. no. Okay. Uh, Chris, what is it? Is it just the tip? Is it around the horn? It's, it's just it... the tip. All right. Just yes. the tip. Mental, keep both hands on the wheel. You're driving. <laughs> right? No, don't. Don't. Yeah, it's unsafe. 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 This is going right along the same theme. How can you protect future you in a safety way? Ooh. Ooh, I think just like keep your eyes open for unsafe things and don't say, oh, no, I'll do that later. You know, move that bucket of oil that's sitting in the middle of the floor. Oh, that you're who's the guy in. who steps in the oil bucket every freaking time? Yep. Do or the kitty, kitty litter that's still there and it becomes a slick space because yep. you roll over it. Like, yep. Oh, that, that rake on the floor that yeah, you're going to step on it. It's going to come up and hit you in the head. You know, all, this. the sharp things that are around. No, say, oh, yeah, I should do something about that. Do and it. I love this. Just do that thing now so that you don't hurt yourself or someone else later. It's it's why put off till tomorrow what you can do today, especially when it's going to help you. So th- this is the best way you can help future you. 
is when you see something unsafe, do something about it. That's a great, that's a great one. Love this. I was in, muted. In I said, love this like three times. While I was muted. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's exactly what you need to do in life everywhere. Do it. So good. All right. That wraps it up. Uh, hey, tick, uh, I almost said TikTok listeners. The My TikToks. God. The, the, the no, TikToks. Tic- oh, hey, sorry, the Chinese podcast government. Podcast listeners. Oh. Oh, no. Podcast listeners. If you've built an outbuilding and you have tips for me, because <laughs> I'm building an outbuilding, yeah, right. send us an email. Mm-hmm. Do we have any idea what we're covering next week? No, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. When are we recording? Depends on when the Eagles parade is. <laughs> oh, that was pre- Oof, okay. Yeah, wow. Okay. Mental. Anything you want to add now that you're uh, at a stop here? You're good. I'm right. good. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for letting me jump in. I I should be back uh, a somewhat normal schedule here in uh, this time next week. Oh, great! Fantastic. All I'm right. Glad you so, could join us. Thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We'll also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to YouTube or talk to us on the caress the like button, caress share, do whatever you're going to do. Five-star rating on, on iTunes would be great. Anyway, if you have any ideas... Drop a comment on our Facebook page or hit us on the doodly do. Tell us what you do to protect your future self. Uh, if you have any, uh, you can hit us up on email, everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text mental 484 243 0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers, YouTube or Facebook, Everyone Racers. You can find us wherever you are, even on Reddit. Slash E1R. Thanks again, and until next time, don't drink too much Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh (laughs) my gosh, are you kidding? And most importantly, don't drink and drive. Keep (laughs) the shiny side up. Just keep those wheels down, folks. Oh my god, okay.